on that note. Um, which, which note? Um, the, <laughs> which note? <laughs> <laughs> Too sharp, please. Too sharp. <laughs> um, uh, um, you said you were inspired by the sound of the violin. Yeah. Um, growing up, was it particular? Was it like a classical violin sound? Yes, or was it yes. Heifetz. Heifetz? No, yes. No. <laughs> a bad example, but... <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I want to play like that. So, yeah, no, no, it, was, it was that. Uh, it was, and it was very funny because in Israel, a lot of the stuff on the radio at that time was different. It was a lot of classical music, you know. I mean, there, the pop music at that time was an overture by Soupe. It was the <laughs> pop music, you know. The light cavalry overture. Boom! Light! Wow! You know, popular music. Then it started to, to, to get into the normal popular music. But, uh, so, the, you know, but I, I still remember those, the, the, the sound. No, no, keep going. Okay. Nobody else has, everybody has run out of questions, so, <laughs> so you're, you're, I'm lying to you now. Okay, cool. Um, I was wondering, um, you, I saw a video that you did on, on YouTube about the um, Prop 8 or something. Yeah. Um, and I saw you have like four daughters. No, no, I have or three daughters and two sons. Three daughters. Um, do any of them play violin? Like, did you uh, no. push them into classical music? No. No? No. no. One daughter uh, actually uh, wanted to play the violin, and we were all very upset. <laughs> <laughs> because we felt that, you know, I know there are some examples of parents and children playing the same instrument, but I find that being a parent, uh, as it is, is such a, an important and a difficult job that you don't need something else to complicate it. But we kind of crossed our fingers, you know, and started to play. And, or about six months. I even I even offered, you know, to teach her a little bit. I worked with her and after six months she said <laughs> So we said, thank God. <laughs> So uh, so what we have is we have uh, we have a we have a, a pianist, one plays a piano. The one who wanted to play the violin right now is a singer, but she doesn't she didn't want to sing either. She's a very good singer. But so she's she's now a social worker and she loves it. And then we have another daughter who plays a flute. And, um, you had a son to play trumpet, right? And my son, no, yeah, my son, well, which I one? Him at Interlock in Wait a second, Rami. Yeah. Yes, well, Rami right now is in a band. No, <laughs> you, can, you can all, he's, he's in a band. If you, you, if you go on the website, my son Rami is in a band called Electrolytes. <laughs> with C at the end. And they do, you know, like dance pop kind of thing. They've got a rapper. And it's a, it's a nice band, and they're trying to get signed, you know, so that's, and he's the singer. He's the, he's the lead singer. So that's my question. Of the yeah. What has playing the violin taught you about life? Oh, this is such a nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to say, what did playing the violin taught me about life? I don't know. Uh, did you have to practice? <laughs> no, I think I think life, uh, playing the violin is, is for me is part of life, uh, part of my life. Uh, but I think that uh, what you do with your life, uh, I don't think has anything to do with how you play the violin or, or what you do. You know, just life is something very, very important. And the job of teaching about life is by example, and your parents uh, have something to do with it. And uh, you know, our program, we try to teach kids about camaraderie and, and what it means to, to try it. And I suppose try and do your best, I think it's the most important thing. It's not so much what the other person is doing, but what you're doing and what, you know, and how happy you are in what you're doing. Uh, you know, right now, uh, when the challenge, when uh, students get to be around the age of 18 or 19 years old, and they're very, very talented musicians, the challenge now is what do they do with their life? And, uh, you know, everybody, when they first start to play an instrument, want to do the, the best, which is, you know, they want to play solo in orchestra, they want to be at Carnegie Hall, you know, everybody has those, those hopes, but not everybody can do that. And so the trick is, how do, what do you do when you realize that this is not something that you're going to do? So, do you leave music altogether? Of course not. You know, if you're good, if you love what you're doing, if you've spent eight years or 10 years or 12 years and sometimes more 
in, in doing something. What do you do with your life in music? And that's, I think that's a very important thing to figure out. Now, what advice do I give my students? I tell them music is something that's very flexible. It's a, it's a great, it's a great profession in many ways. You can do so many things. You can play chamber music, you can play an orchestra, you can start your own group, you can do teaching, you can do so many things. You can do some of each. Some of each. Um, it's, it's very, and, and I have a lot of students that do very, very well, you know, from the program in music. The ones that do very well in music are the ones that are very imaginative. They know what, you know, they know, I'm going to start something. I mean, I have a student who started a series where she did a concert in collaboration with a restaurant that had a lot of wines, a lot of great wines. And what she would do is she would take uh, uh, pieces, let's say, by Vivaldi, and pair them with some Italian wines. And she would take a French, a French sonata, you know, and she would pair it with some French wines. And she would, yeah. you know, it's 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 a kind of an unusual oh, kind of thing. Oh, no. Yeah, things like that. You know, I mean, uh, somebody else did something else. The people who don't do well are the people who say, now what do I do? You know, I've studied and, and I've auditioned for the conductor and I didn't think, uh, what am I going to do? You know, you got it. Yeah. The last thing made me think of synesthesia. Do you have any synesthesia? Um, I would say a little bit. That's that's a look at, listening to a, a note and seeing the color. Oh, okay. Is it, what's called synesthesia? Yeah, Isn't synesthesia. That one? Yeah. Uh, it's very funny because we had a, uh, a studio class with the kids and uh, and I had to usually have a huge jar of jelly beans in the class. And um, so what I would do is I would take a jelly bean and I would show it to a kid, just to one of the violinists, and I would say, here, there's a, I want you to play a note, and I want people to guess what color that note is. And, you know, and then I would hold the jelly bean like this, and, and this person would play the note, and everybody said blue, red, and then I would say, and then the person says blue. So everybody has, I suppose, if you have a, an imagination, I, I think of some notes as heavy colors, but I don't know if my if I've got something that is really very profoundly uh, anesthetic, <laughs> making up the word. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think your role is in music as the great violinist that you are to promote new artists or to bring back for them composers, or to keep favorites as favorites? Well, I don't know what my role. I mean, I don't know what my role is, but what I've been doing is teaching and I suppose you know teaching is 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 I'm just hoping I, I think that the most important uh, the most important element in, in, in anything that you want to do here whether it's science or music art uh, literature whatever are the teachers the teachers are the most important for me the only second to parents in society are the teachers and unfortunately, the teachers are not, uh, you know, given any, you know, any respect. They're not the respect that they deserve. So my role, I think, in, in, with the whole business about teaching students how to play the violin well and to be good musicians, is to also take the way I teach as an example, so that when they teach, they could use that as an example. So that, so you know, for example, we have right now uh, one of my assistants at the Juilliard School is an alum of our program. A wonderful teacher. He says, actually, every two years I have somebody from my class become a, a, an assistant teacher. Uh, so, and and they're, and at, at first they're absolutely petrified. I mean, you know, one of the great things, I don't know, if, has anybody here uh, who is not a teacher uh, tried to teach? Any of the kids? Yeah. Have you tried? Do you find it difficult? Uh, the first couple lessons, it yes. was very like. What, I, what do you say? I had no idea. What do you say exactly? <laughs> what do I say? What do, and it's almost like wishing the person would play well, uh, would play badly. I <laughs> hope that person plays badly so I know what to say. I don't want him to play well. To play well, what do I say? Well, so something like that is is very very important. So I'm I'm just hoping that that our program will produce, you know, a. a crop of really, really great, great teachers because right now it's 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 very difficult. It's very difficult to find really, really wonderful, wonderful teachers.